What's up, guys? It's your girl, Jarika, back at it again. So, today's video is a story time. Um, and I like doing these story times and these real talks with me so Morning. you could get to know a little bit more about me and my family as well as things I'm passionate about, etc. when it comes to like Jericho talks and stuff like that. So today I wanted to do a story time on my firstborn. Um, yeah. So... So my firstborn was born on February 2nd, 2010, and he was supposed to be born on Valentine's Day. He was, that was his due date. I'm sorry guys. If you hear background noise, that's my daughter. It's around bedtime and this is the time where she starts fighting her sleep <laughs> okay back into the story um i found out i was pregnant with my son when i was 18 years old and that was like one of the most amazing days of my life because if you have been with my channel for a while you would know that um I was told as a young child that I would not be able to have children. So morning, when I found morning. out I was pregnant with Jeremiah, let me just tell you the story so you guys don't get lost because I'm like all over the place already. All right, I was with my son's father for about a year and a half before I found out I was pregnant with him. But during our relationship, um, we always had a good relationship in the beginning in between the year and a half like the whole year and a half it was a great relationship the only problem was that he was always in and out of jail because he was young and he wasn't working he was just hustling aka selling drugs in the street so yeah he was always getting arrested and the last time he was arrested, I was like, you know, I had enough. I don't want to deal with this no more. I went back to Puerto Rico, but my heart was in New York City because I really loved him and I really wanted to be with him and he wanted to be with me. So I ended up going back to New York and when we got to New York, you know, they, they always had a problem, him and his mom, and we was living with his mom. So he got in touch with his dad now they never had a relationship morning, as he was morning. growing up because his father was always doing his own thing so when he was able to speak to his dad you know he told them that you know things was rocky at home with his mom etc etc he had a girlfriend and we were living together so his father said he was gonna send him two bus tickets to um, Binghamton New York which is upstate not in the city and um, we agreed to go because we had nothing to lose. You know, we was young, we didn't have no children. We was like, why, why not? Um, us living in your mom's house is not working at the moment because we're always arguing, there's always something. So we ended up going to Binghamton. Um, <clears throat> when we got there, his father was this lovely guy, but as days would pass by, I started noticing that he was also an alcoholic and I was like okay you know and then him and um, his wife were always arguing so it was kind of uncomfortable feeling because at that time we was sleeping in the living room because the living room was like our area um, his father was great I mean he made sure we had a nice big air mattress one of those comfy ones we had everything we would want, always. But my morning, son's father morning. wanted to build a relationship with his dad, and he started drinking. His dad would offer him drinks, and they were drinking all the time, where it was becoming a problem, because I'd never seen this side of him. So he would get drunk, and then he would get um, 
argumentative and always want to fight. And this was a side of him I never seen, yet I was not going to tolerate. Um, I also came to find out that his dad was also um, a cocaine user. And over time, I found out that my son's father was also doing that with his dad. But um, after like a month or two, his dad said that we was going to move into a bigger place so we could have our own like area. So when we ended up moving, he did, he bought, well, he rented like a two family house and he, his apartment was on the first floor and he gave us the second floor, which was a whole different apartment, which was more like of, yeah, it was like a one bedroom apartment, but it was like a railroad apartment. If you guys know what a railroad apartment is, it's like living room, bedroom, kitchen. It was just going straight through. You had to pass everything to get to like the kitchen. And then there was a bathroom inside of the bedroom. So, I mean, it was a great place. I really enjoyed living there, especially being apart from that. I felt like if I was being apart from the dad, maybe things would prosper and get better between uh, my son's father and I. But um, I started feeling really, really, really sick. And I really thought it was a change of weather. I was throwing up really bad. And I was like, oh my God, this is a stomach bug. This is a virus. I I was getting pale. I was like just all around bad. I couldn't keep anything down. So I headed to the emergency room. Pregnancy was the last thing on my mind because I honestly didn't think I could have children. So that was not a factor. When I get to the emergency room and that day that I found out I was pregnant was the day that Michael Jackson passed away because when I was in the emergency room, it was breaking news everywhere, Michael Jackson had passed away. And I started crying my eyes out because anybody that knows me know that I am a Michael Jackson fan. I love him, I love him before the surgeries, after the surgeries, his music was bomb, he was the man. And when they said I had to take a pregnancy test, I said, well, that's not necessary because I can't have children. It was like, well, it's mandatory just so we could just cross it out. I said, okay. I go and, you know, I pee in the cup and I give it to them and I'm just waiting and I'm feeling so bad. The doctor comes in and he's like, well, morning, we know morning. what's the problem. And I thought it was through the blood work and I was like thinking the worst, like, oh my God, I'm going to die. And he was like, well, congratulations. I'm like, what? Like, congratulating me for what? I'm over here thinking I'm dying and he's congratulating me. What is going on? He tells me you're pregnant. And I'm like, I'm confused, but I'm jumping for joy. But I'm puzzled and so is my son's father because he wanted to have a baby and so did I. But we already knew that that wasn't happening because one, the doctor was telling us we couldn't, and two, because we was having unprotected sex, and in a year and a half, I wasn't getting pregnant. So it was just shocking. So I was really excited and really happy. I remember the first person I called was my mom. I was like, mom, guess what, I'm pregnant. She was like, no way, for real, congratulations, I'm gonna be a grandma. And then shortly after that, I found out she had cancer. And that's a different story, but, um, but things didn't change between my son's father and I. And um, there was always arguments and it got to the point where it was starting to get physical. Where one day, and I was already pregnant, and he told me to shut up before he kicks me in my stomach. And when he told me that I was in the balcony of the apartment, cause morning, next to the kitchen morning. you could walk out and it was like a balcony. and. He threatened to kick me in my stomach and I'm now very objective of my pregnancy because it's a miracle child in my eyes so I called my mom when he left the house and I called my mom and said mom you have to send me money I have to get out of here you know he just threatened to kick me in my stomach and you know this is a miracle because you know I couldn't have children and my mom was like oh my god okay no worries I'm gonna talk to grandpa case may be long story short she had deposited money into my account and he wasn't aware of it. So I called his cousins and I had to explain to them the whole situation. 
and they were like, okay, that's, don't worry about it, I'll be right there, just pack up your things and I'm gonna come get you and I'll take you down to the Greyhound. I said, okay, great. So I'm packing up my stuff and he comes in, he's like, where are you going? I'm like, I need a break. I'm gonna stay in your cousin's house for a while till you could get yourself sorted out. Just because I didn't want him to stop me from leaving or even endangering myself more, you know? So I was like, okay. So he was like upset about it, but he was like, okay, fine. Take whatever time you need it. And I was like, okay, thank God he wasn't arguing with me to leave. So we leave and we go to the Greyhound and I lost the last bus. So I had to stay with the cousin overnight, which was great. Cause it was like, we got to talk and it was morning, just a great morning. time. The next morning they dropped me off. I take the bus into New York and I have these heavy luggages and I'm pregnant and I have to go all the way on the train to go all the way to my um, grandma's house. So my uncle could pick me up and take me to his house because my son's father knew where my grandma lived. So I wanted to go somewhere he didn't know, so I know I was safe. So when I ended up going to my uncle's house, a week later, I took a flight to Puerto Rico. And that was my safe haven. And at that time, that's when I found out my mom had cancer. So I had a lot going on. I was pregnant. My mom was in, had cancer. She was taking chemo, radiation. Um, she was like really weak. She could only drive, but hardly walk. So it was like everything was on me. We had to get a wheelchair. I was wheel, wheeling her around. And my mom was a heavy set woman. So I was like wheelchailing her everywhere and straining myself. And, but you know what? Thinking about it now, I'll do that all over again for my mom. So it wasn't really, I, it really wasn't something that really upset me when I was doing it. But it was just to show you that I had a lot going on. Then um, my mom was always in and out of the hospital. So I would have to take care of my brother and sister on my own while being pregnant. And I didn't know how to drive. Morning, so morning. I was always walking them to school or doing, you know, just doing a lot of things. And getting neighbors to drive me to the hospital to see my mom. Or um, when I came back to Puerto Rico, I ended up getting back with my ex-boyfriend. And you know, he accepted the whole pregnancy. He wasn't happy about it, but he did accept it. So he was helping me around as well. So um, my pregnancy was pretty all right. It was really good to the end where I started getting high blood pressure and they were watching it so it won't go to preeclampsia. So the last, well, the last appointment that I had, I, it was just a routine checkup, you know, nothing big. I was going into the doctor. Now, mind you, being in Puerto Rico, my doctor was an hour driving away because it was far. And we went. My mom was so supportive. She would go with me to every appointment, so which was amazing, and it was great. So when we get there, the doctor says, oh, okay, your blood pressure is really high. Um, you're going to have to have this baby today or get induced so you can have this baby soon. And I was like, huh? First of all, I didn't even pack a hospital bag. I didn't come prepared. I didn't do anything. I'm terrified. This is my first child. My mom doesn't know what it is to have a child. So we're both freaking out. So my mom was like, okay. So he said, just go home, pack up your things, and then go to the hospital. Morning, which the morning. hospital away from my house was an hour away as well. So my mom was like, don't worry. We'll just take our sweet time. They're already expecting you. So we went and we had um, a big lunch at Denny's and then we drove home and we packed up my bag and the baby's bag and we put in the car seat and everything so now we head to the hospital and when I get there, oh my god this this story is the most funniest because when we get to the hospital you know they put an enema on me and that was the most disgusting thing I've ever had to deal with but okay and now they tell me I can't drink, I can't eat anything, I'm dying of thirst, my mouth is dry, I'm like going through it. They put an IV on, now they're gonna start Pitocin. Now, when I arrived, another girl arrived and she was being induced as well. So we got induced at the same time. I'll say like about an hour or two later, she is screaming bloody mercy, like screaming. And I'm over here petrified, like, and about, an hour after that, she ended up having her baby. Now, here I am with a dose of Pitocin, and I have no 
pain at all and they're like are you not feeling any pain i'm like no am i supposed to they're like yeah <laughs> and not even contractions they asked me if i was having contractions i didn't even know what the heck that Morning. was i'm like what's that and it was like you know like pain is in your stomach and i'm like no is there something wrong is the baby okay they're like the baby's perfectly fine relax so after a couple hours they give me another um dose of pitocin and i'm still feeling no pain i was just feeling a little discomfort where i was uncomfortable i guess the baby whatever it was probably was it was in contraction because i was in no pain but i just felt uncomfortable like i had a like i had an upset stomach but it wasn't painful it just felt like a bad stomach ache and the baby was moving all around and then they came and they broke my water to see if that would help also with the contractions. Nothing. They come check, I was one centimeter dilated, only one centimeter dilated. So the doctor comes after a couple hours again, gives me another dose of Pitocin. Now I'm feeling no pain, but I am drugged to the max and I'm all cross-sided like this. And when my mom came in, I thought she was here, yet she was over here, cause I was seeing like 10 of her. And I'm talking to her, she's like, what is wrong with you? I'm over here. I'm like, I don't know. I just seeing everything double in the room. And I want to have my baby and I'm not having no pain. Is this normal? Is the baby okay? I was freaking out. The doctor coming, he was like, we gave you so much dose of Pitocin and you're not in pain. This is enough to knock an elephant out. Like, I don't understand. So he was like, well, I already had broke your water bag, so um, we're gonna have to have a C-section. And in Puerto Rico, when you go into labor and have a C-section, no one is allowed in the operating room. Unlike here in New York, you can have your spouse or whoever you choose to be in the room with you. So I felt alone, I was afraid, and I remember getting prepped and I was laying down and the people were, the people were like talking about their like the weekend and what they did and I'm thinking they're getting everything prepped and all of a sudden I hear I was my baby and um I was so pooped because I had all these drugs and I didn't get to sleep that night because I was so nervous I was literally drained I was hanging off a thread and um I remember they showed me him but I can't even tell you how he looked because it was all a blur and all I remember was passing out and waking up in my hospital room and when I woke up I was alone I was freaking out I was like where's my mom I didn't even have my hospital bag I called my mom my mom was home she had left because it was just a long procedure so I'm like okay buy me clothes I have this hospital shirt on I have a diaper on I want to get comfortable and she was like, okay, I'm gonna send um, Edison, which was my ex-boyfriend, to the hospital with your stuff. And sure enough, like an hour later, he shows up and um, he brought me my, you know, the baby bag, the hospital bag. He brought me dinner. And, you know, he was still not pleased and happy and accepting of me having another man's baby because he wanted to have a baby with me. And we never had one <laughs> so um he left and now the nurse comes and she goes okay um she helped me like change into my pajamas the next day they come to help me in the shower and i tell you guys that was the worst thing now after having this baby i already knew the swing of things you have to get up after having the c-section so you won't get stuck in whatever comfort position you have because when you get up it's gonna feel like everything is stretching and breaking and it's just terrible so when she's trying to get me off the bed i couldn't i was screaming in pain and she was like okay on the count of three one two and she didn't wait for three and she pulled me up and i was about in tears so i'm walking to the bathroom like an old woman hunched over and i'm walking and I'm crying in the shower and it got to the point that it was so painful I couldn't even soak myself. The lady had to soak me and get me ready. She even put the pad on my panties and was dressing me. It was just a mess. I wanted to cry and cry. But um, 
My son, I didn't get to see him that night. I saw him the next morning. I made myself get up and go to that nursery because I wanted to see my baby. And my mom was there. And my mom, my mom, when she came the next day, she told me, oh my God, Jaraka, that little boy is the most ugliest baby I've ever seen in my life. And I'm like, oh my God, what's wrong with him? He has 12 toes. Like, I was just thinking the worst. And she was like, no, maybe it was because he was swollen, but he is not cute at all. So please don't be alarmed when you see him. And I'm like, oh my God, what did I give birth to? And I'm like, okay, so I go to the nursery and they bring me my baby and I'm waiting in like the breastfeeding room and all these mommies have their baby and they're all taking off the blanket because they love their baby so much and they want to show it off to all the other girls. Here I am, they gave me my baby and I see my baby for the first time and my mom was absolutely right. He was horrible looking. And I was like, oh my God. And instead of unwrapping him and loving him like everyone else, I was wrapping him up more because I was ashamed. <laughs> Oh, wow, he looked. Oh my God, that's so bad to say. And <laughs> when we finally get to go home, morning, um, morning, morning. right after my mom got hospitalized though, again. So I was left two days right after having a C-section, having to care for everyone in the house, having to clean the house, having to cook, having to bring my mom food. So basically I didn't have a chance to recover or God was just with me and gave me so much strength, I was able to do what I had to do. And um, when my mom got out of the hospital and about a couple of months later, she went to remission. And she used to always say that the baby was what made her go into remission because he brought her so much joy. And it was just amazing the bond that they had and yes, after about two weeks, he got so cute. He was the most adorable little thing there was, but he wasn't cute when he was born. And if any parent tells you their baby was cute, you know, babies are cute. They, some are born gorgeous and there's some that are not. And I'm one of those parents that's gonna be honest. He was not cute at all. <laughs> and he laughs every time I tell him the story. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to share my story with you because I thought it was so funny how I became a parent. When he came into the world, I had just turned 19. So I got pregnant at 18, had him at 19, so I was still a teen parent. Um, Warning. But I always had to support my mom and I still did what I had to do for my child. I didn't depend on no one. My mom and my grandpa helped me, but majority of the things I was doing was on my own. So this is just for all the teen moms out there, young moms, even their twins. Don't think that the world is gonna end just because you had a baby. It's actually gonna get your life together, actually, because you're gonna want to um, be the best mom or role model for your baby. So yeah, guys, this is my <laughs> this is my story of my firstborn. I really hope you guys enjoyed um, this story. You got to know a lot more about me and my journey of having my first child. So there you go, more info in my life. So you're getting to know me more, that's great. All right guys, if you really enjoyed the story time, thumbs up please. You know that helps your girl out a lot. Leave a comment down below on what you found was the most funniest part of the video. And for my new subscribers, welcome to my YouTube family. I'm so happy to have you guys and I hope you stick along with us because there's going to be such amazing more new content coming out and a lot of surprising other little things that I will be mentioning tomorrow. So without further ado, until next time guys. Morning.